What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina and today's video we're going to talk about being prepared for your dive trip. Now I'm loading up my truck here, I'm actually headed out tomorrow evening down to the Florida Springs with a group of divers. I have several certified divers going down, I have several students going down as well. And so what I want to do is talk about how you should be preparing for your dive trip. We're not really going to go over exactly what you need to carry with you because that's going to be geographically uh, specific. If I'm going say to the tropics, obviously I'm not going to be taking and cave gear with me. If I'm going to dive up north and under the ice, obviously I'm not going to be taking a shorty and things like that with me. So as far as what you take with you is going to be very specific to your geographical location. However, I'm going to give you some five tips that I use every single time I plan a dive trip and they seem to have helped me over the last 31 years and hopefully they'll help you as well. First of all, we want to talk about emergency action plans. It's always very important that you have some type of an emergency action plan put in place. If you're rescue diver certified, you'll learn about that during your rescue diver course as well. Uh, but if you're taking the open water class, simply ask your instructor what an emergency action plan is and he can go over in detail what each part of the emergency action plan is. Basically what I use it for is simply to let people know where I'm at, what my plans are throughout that dive and what to do in an emergency if I don't contact them after a dive or let's say I become lost throughout a dive. So that emergency action plan is first and foremost with me. I plan it and I have one for every single trip that I go on. Number two, let's talk about your equipment. It doesn't matter what equipment you take with you as long as it's adequate for the type of diving you're doing. However, you do want to make sure that all your equipment is serviced and it's in proper working order before you ever go on that trip. You know, it's really, really bad to get out on a dive boat and your mast strap breaks or your fin strap breaks or your over or uh, say your second stage is free flowing and it's not something that you can very easily adjust and fix so you want to make sure your gear is serviced way in advance before that trip if your local dive shop can't service it a lot of times they're going to have to send it off and you may be looking at a two to three week through two to three week waiting process just before you get your equipment back. You take our shop here. We are a Mares service center. So you bring us Mares gear. We're going to have it back to you, if not the same day, the very next morning. So we'll get it back to you very quickly. However, if you bring us a gear manufacturer that we don't service, obviously we've got to send it off to that manufacturer or to another company. And when we do that, you're probably looking at a two to three week uh, wait before you get it back. So you want to make sure your gear is properly serviced well in advance before you go on that trip. Another quick tip that you want to talk about or that we want to talk about is taking the gear that it's appropriate for that trip and not over packing. So like I said, obviously if I'm going to a warm destination, I'm not going to be taking cold water gear. If I'm going to a cold water destination, I'm not going to be taking warm water gear. However, I do want to think about spare parts, spare equipment, things like that. Obviously I take wrenches and extra O-rings and stuff to fix regulators, but one of the things that I do on every trip I go on is I take a spare regulator with me because a lot of times it's a lot easier just to pull out the spare regulator, put it on the tank, and go dive and enjoy my trip versus trying to repair that regulator while on that trip. Now, if it's something easy I can do, tighten up a hose, replace a simple O-ring, adjust something here or there, that's fine. But, you know, I also take that spare regulator for my students as well because, you know, part of being a professional is making sure that my students and my customers have a fun, enjoyable time. And if we're sitting there fiddling with their gear when we should just put the spare rag on and let them go have a good time. That's what we should be really doing versus making them wait and stay out of the water just because we have too many problems at one time. Last thing I wanna talk about, of course, is are you adequately prepared for that type of diving that you're going down to do. Now, we're headed down to the springs. There's a lot of overhead environments, and I do have several certified divers that will be going up underneath those overhead environments, but obviously my open water students will not. So one of the things that I try to tell you is, is well in advance, maybe a month, two, even three months before your trip, Get some type of specialty training that is adequate for the area that you're going to be in. You know, if the open water divers uh, or my certified divers want to go up underneath that overhead environment, maybe take a cavern class. Maybe take a night diver class because obviously there's not going to be a lot of light in there. Or take whatever is appropriate for your area. If you're going out in the ocean and there's going to be a strong current, maybe you're doing a deep wreck. Uh, top diving, maybe take a deep course. Definitely take a wreck course or even a drift diver course of some type. And I think it will m make you a little bit better prepared for that type of diving and it'll definitely keep you safe while on your trip as well. So guys, that's kind of my quick tips and things that I think about before every single dive. I want to make sure I have some type of emergency action plan put in place. I want to make sure that all my gear is prepared and that I don't take too much, but I don't take too little 
gear. I want to make sure that I'm properly trained for the type of diving that I'm going to be doing. And of course, I will give you one final pointer as well. Make sure you have a good time. If you're not having a good time, you're probably not going to go diving anymore. So maybe have some other type of alternate recreational activity plan in case you get down there and you can't dive. Now, obviously, if it's raining on our trip, it doesn't really bother us. We're going to get wet anyways, so we jump in the water and go uh, diving as well. But if it's storming, if it's lightning, things like that, obviously, we don't get in the water for it. If you dive in the ocean a lot and maybe there's a lot of heavy seas, a lot of times charters won't go out. So make sure that there's other recreational activities in the area that you're going just in the event that something bad happens and you can't go diving, and it'll make your dive trips a lot more enjoyable but guys that's it that's my quick tips that i do every or i think about every time i go on a dive trip doesn't matter if i'm flying or if i'm driving to a local trip somewhere those are the things that i think about and that i prepare for and if you do the same i think it'll make you a better well-rounded diver a better educated diver and you'll definitely have a lot more fun on those dive trips but guys if you like this video simply smash that like button for me and definitely share it as well if you got any questions or if you think i left something out of my personal dive plans let me know down in the comment section below because i like to learn from you guys just like i like to teach you guys as well because i appreciate you watching this video as always Please make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.